Hey. Hey, you guys. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, good morning. <coughs> it's a beautiful day, September the 18th. Um, my mother gave birth to me on this day quite some time ago. <laughs> God bless her. And uh, I was the fourth of five. And uh, the truth were known, I think she probably would have been finished after two or three, but more kept coming. And that was the time, big family, see? Anyway, so what an amazing story we all have. Lots of years of recovery, you know, uh, Came from an alcoholic family, a good Scottish background of heavy drinkers, and uh, um, anyway, I'm grateful for my recovery. And uh, one of the ways I get to show that my gratitude for my recovery is is to do this. So I read uh, on a daily basis. Lately, I started doing it a month and a half ago or so, and uh, from the uh, daily reflections and. Today's, uh, the title for today is Loved Back to Recovery. Loved Back to Recovery. And uh, this is from the best of the grapevine. And it says, our whole treasured philosophy of self-sufficiency had to be cast aside. So, I mean, it, we have to really look at that sentence. Our whole treasured philosophy of self-sufficiency had to be cast aside. Um, many of us didn't realize, I don't think, that we had a philosophy of self-sufficiency, but you know, our conditioning had been very strong of self-sufficiency, that we were gonna muscle up and get through whatever it was we're gonna get through, we're gonna power through it, we're gonna pull up our socks, and, 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 and uh, um, we had to surrender, that we couldn't get through life on self-sufficiency. And it says, this had not been done with old-fashioned willpower. So we had not let go of this self-sufficiency with old-fashioned willpower. It was instead a matter of developing the willingness to accept these new facts of living. So it's a fact that self-sufficiency was not, was not enough. We couldn't do it. And uh, <clears throat> we neither ran nor fought, but except we did and then we were free. So we accept, yes, you can get up there. Go ahead, go ahead, hey, come here, come here. <laughs> this is, this is doocy. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, that's good, good girl. Here we go, yes, thank you. Um, so that's it, and we accepted it, that we couldn't run the show. And it's, it's a, some of us get pretty mangled in recovery, trying to uh, improve, you know, uh, the recovery program is not a self-improvement program. It's not a self-improvement. We do Im improve, but but we don't do it through uh, self-will or, hey, Ducey, no, I said no, not up there. Hey, get down, get down. <laughs> and uh, so we, we just, we surrender. And, and uh, it, some, for some of us, m myself for sure, it took a lot of years to realize that, that I couldn't get my way. So it's the, it really is the cornerstone of this whole recovery process is, is the, it, the second half of step one, which is that we, you know, we realized that our life was unmanageable by us. And, uh, and then it goes on further to say, uh, I can be free of my old enslaving self. After a while I recognize and believe in the good within myself. I see that I have been loved back to recovery by my higher power, God as I understand him, who envelops me. My higher power becomes that source of love and strength that is performing a continuing miracle in me. I am sober and I am grateful. Hmm. Beautiful really. So the, the deal is letting go 
you know, old cliche, letting go and letting God, and uh, um, that's that's recovery. And how do we show our gratitude? Well, we we give it away. We continue to give it away, and and, and uh, I'm at a time in my life when I can can do that a lot, and hopefully, um, you know, message gets heard or or you know shared or somehow makes a difference. We don't get to see the the how it all unfolds we just get to do our job and, and uh, often uh, we, we don't see the big picture so we just be available so that's it speaking of that uh, tonight uh, the meditation group here at the house and part of the recovery process is to meditate right and uh, it's okay you can get up there yeah hey Bob come here come on. yes this is Bob <laughs> Yeah, isn't he beautiful? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Okay, there you go. Jump down. There we go. So, part of the recovery process is is this is meditating. And, and why do we meditate? Um, we don't meditate to become a better meditator. We we, we meditate so that we can um, get still, and we find that stillness within us, that quiet. You know, how can we hear the voice of the the still small voice within us if if we're not practicing being still so that's the that's the deal meditation gives us this this practice that opens the door that we can you know be in the stillness and uh, and hear the voice you know um, I think I've shared this before but a, a friend of mine one of my sponsees I think asked me recently you know how could I tell the, the voice of ego or the voice of God and 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 the voice of ego is louder we don't need to be still to hear it. It's it's louder, and uh, but the voice of higher power is not. You know, it's often quiet, and we need to slow down to hear it. Mm -hmm. So meditation is is part of that, and lots of people struggle with it. Uh, um, you know, they tried it. I've had people say, "Oh, I tried meditation, didn't work for me." <laughs> Just keep doing it. We keep sitting and. I started three minutes. I used to just have a timer. Sheila organized a timer for me in the very beginning, you know, and I'd been, I was in recovery a long time, but she would have this timer and I would sit for three minutes and, and, uh, and that's how I got to start. And now, you know, time, I love to sit and just drop into this emptiness, this stillness, this isness. So anyway, love you guys. And Friday night's big book study. Uh, come and join us there. Okay. Cheers. Bye.